What's up, Brian Tong here, and guess what? I had to do another video this week because we are learning a whole lot more right up to the WWDC keynote on June 5th. So we're gonna get right into the new details just days before the event, which is shaping up to be really the biggest keynote of 2023 if everything being reported is true. And yes, all the big buzz is around the Apple Reality Pro headset, but we just learned a whole lot more after a new report from the information, and it describes Apple's unconventional curved design, some insane details about the headset and its production issues. Now, I have said on my podcast and on my last video that this is easily the most complex device Apple has ever made. And according to the report, the headset features not only an unconventional curved design, but its thinness and its ultra lightweight are unlike anything that we've seen. Now, renders seen by the information describe it as a piece of curved glass with edges wrapped in a smooth aluminum frame that appears to be slightly thicker than an iPhone. And then the thin profile of the headset will require someone who wears glasses to buy prescription lenses that magnetically clip into the headset. What? Like, that sounds amazing. Uh, still $3,000 amazing? But, okay, if you're peeing yourself just a little more than you were before because... I kind of am. According to the report, and there's plenty more here, Apple had to develop a first of its kind bent motherboard that would fit inside the curved outer shell. And carbon fiber is used inside the headset for structure, support, and to keep it lightweight. There's a dial similar to the digital crown at the top right above the right eye, and that will let you switch between augmented and virtual reality. And then the power button is gonna be above the left eye. There's reportedly a round connector that looks similar to a Apple watch charger that attaches to the left temple of the headset. And then it runs down with a cable that connects to the rumored battery pack that will be waist mounted. The Apple headset headband is made of what is described as a soft material attached to two short hard temples that also contain left and right speakers. There's a removable cover that attaches to the back of the headset. Uh, that's to be comfortable against your face when you wear it. And then eye tracking has been rumored but has not been confirmed. The information says Apple debated adding eye tracking cameras or more adjustments to the motorized lenses to accommodate for different face shapes. We'll see if that happens, but these renders that you've been looking at that I've been kind of dropping here and there, they're by Ian Zelbel and 9to5Mac, and then also Marcus Kane, who seemed to get really as close as we've heard to how the information describes what it might all look like. Now, the industrial design is expected to be like nothing we've seen so far from a VR headset. We wouldn't expect anything less when Apple is getting into the mix, but these new renders are even more streamlined. We've got the front headset that is made of a thin piece of curved glass with more than a dozen cameras and sensors concealed inside for this clean aesthetic. Then the material is reportedly more prone to shattering than an iPhone screen due to its shape. And there are some worries about broken glass, potentially injuring users, but it's the design, right? That design that is driving the rumored $3,000 price point. Cha-ching! Now, uh, I gotta say, if it looks anything close to this, and if you spent $3,000 on it, I think you already bought it because it looks sassy, and it's Apple, and there's a whole lot of you watching that are gonna do just that. Now, this could also be a design that, to me, obviously, like, we haven't seen anything like it based on the renders, based on the description, that pushes the entire industry forward, and we need a leap like this to then get us to that next big leap as the tech evolves, as things get more competitive. And the reported 4K micro OLED displays that are reportedly so expensive inside this headset that Apple had to fix defective units rather than discard them, but the manufacturing of them has been challenging. The report says at an earlier stage of development, Apple was making 100 headsets a day, but only 20 units were up to the company standard. Sheesh. Now design tweaks were also made as late as April, which is unusually late in the development cycle for this product to make the headset easier for them to make to then produce more units successfully. Mass production has not begun, but reports still believe it is set for either a fall or winter target release date. So um, let's, let's go back. What did I say about this headset in my last video? Let's say if they can make it the lightest headset, that's easily the most comfortable out there with the highest visual fidelity and what we believe to be the best design and best looking headset in the market, that's a great start, right? Huh. And I said a whole lot more after that, but even look at how small and slim these could be, right? You can't take the PSVR 2 out anywhere like that. Uh, you can't even take the MetaQuest 2 out like that. I'm not saying you're gonna be walking on the street, but they are bigger 
and heavier and clunkier and they they are part of this you know this whole industry evolving but it's part of why i can only last 30 minutes or less in vr and i'm not convincing myself to buy them i'm just saying that that would be cool right it's just so unbelievable all this stuff that we've learned just great reporting by the information and wayne ma you got to give him his props for all that but there's also been some other new nuggets of info that just came out and a new tweet from display analyst Ross Young says the Apple headset will be equipped with two 1.41 inch 4K micro OLED displays. Now each of them will have a 4,000 pixel per inch resolution for each eye that will be able to go beyond 5,000 nits of brightness. Okay, that would be an insane resolution. State of the art compared to anything consumers can get their hands on today. Uh, let's talk about for comparison. The MetaQuest 2, that gives you a 773 pixel print resolution and 100 nits of brightness. That or a 4,000 PPI and 5,000 nits brightness. Yeah, if true, the Apple headset would be 50 times brighter and you know that HDR content would just pop in 4K. Of course, let's talk about it again. The Quest 2 is $400 instead of Apple's rumored $3,000 headset. But you're starting to see at least there is some more value compared to what else is out in the industry today that I'm not rationalizing, but okay, 3000 is making more sense. But Apple is also looking to really bring the highest fidelity to the market when it releases clearly uh, with those screens. And I just think of it, if the headset is going to be really that slim and compact, I'm not saying it's worth it for everybody. Uh, I can't wholeheartedly recommend Anyone should spend $3,000 on a VR AR headset, but would I like to watch a movie on a plane with that image quality and Dolby Atmos headphones? Hell yes, I would. And would I want to play some games on it? Yeah, I definitely would too. Now, Hello Games' founder, Sean Murray, recently posted a tweet with two apples just days before WWDC. That's a studio that makes No Man's Sky that added a VR version of their game that is on all the major VR platforms. So no coincidence there other than No Man's Sky being a potential launch title for the Apple headset. Then you got Beat Games co-founder Yaroslav Beck who decided to get in on the action with a tweet of his own saying June 5th is going to be popcorn emoji glasses emoji. Yes, I read that out loud. And if Beat Saber is another launch title, well then it shows that Apple is getting developer support from two of the flagship games in the VR space. You know, Beat Saber just came out to the PSVR 2 recently, I think just like a week ago or so, with all of its music packs like BTS, Bora Hey. So we'll see what other developers they will have on board for the launch. And we know that Apple has invited multiple people covering the VR space to this event. And that's just another big tell that we will see an official announcement. Also, for the people in the comments in my last video that said, none of this is happening, sorry. It's happening. So just just so, so much juicy info about the Apple Reality Pro headset in there, but there's still more left to squeeze because we've all been expecting the 15 inch MacBook Air at WWDC, but now just a few days before, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says the company is going to introduce several new Macs at the keynote. In a tweet, he said the keynote will be mainly focused on new Macs, as in more than one, and the mixed reality headset as well, but he didn't specify what other Macs we might see. The latest reports claim that we would see Apple's M3 based Macs coming out later this year. So is Apple gonna give us a sneak peek at what's to come? Is there gonna be a new Mac Studio with an M2 or M3? Are there new iMacs with M2 chips? Are they gonna show it to us earlier or are we just talking M3? Because the last report says those wouldn't be coming anytime soon and would be on hold until the M3 chip dropped later this year. So, you know, just something else for us to get excited about and to anticipate at Dub Dub. Now, I did say this WWDC was going to be a big, big deal, and it might have end up being really the biggest keynote in terms of significance for Apple this year, with obviously some sort of follow up to it in the fall. I do have one side thought though, right? After being at Google I/O and seeing just all the AI stuff that they are doing and all the AI advancements around us, period. I'm excited about all the hardware that Apple's gonna drop, but isn't it time for Siri to get that major upgrade and AI boost? We haven't seen it. I mean, we know Apple's been trailing in that area. We know they're working on so many things, but 
if we don't see anything AI related for Siri or maybe some type of AI hooks into the ecosystem that makes our lives easier, um, it will make that gap feel even more significant than it ever has at WWDC between Apple and this huge AI movement. And I know Apple waits on things when they're ready, but this is one of those things that everyone is rushing for. And Apple's ahead in some places, but this feels like they're really behind in this space. But guess what? The glasses will probably distract everyone from that, but I just had to bring it up. Okay, that's it for this video. You know, I had to do another one because again, so much happening. These details were worth bringing to like ASAP. We are literally days away. The keynote is Monday, June the 5th at 10 a.m. Pacific. I won't have a live, sh live stream on my channel, but uh, even better, I will be bringing you all the coverage from inside Apple Park right here on this channel because Apple decided to invite me. So I go. So come on back now. You come back into this channel. Now, if you like what you see, you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell. Ding! To get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next one. Peace and love.